Hallelujah. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Jesus. We are seeing more and more things <clears throat> about Israel. Seeing more and more things about what Israel is doing and what God is doing in Israel. And that picture <clears throat> that we saw just then, that picture has been modified. Been modified by me. I will never show a picture of Jerusalem with that abomination called the mosque on the Temple Mount. Because it shouldn't be there. This is the Temple Mount just behind that wall at the top. And I'm never going to show a mosque there because it shouldn't be there in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Okay, let's make a confession of faith over our Bibles and say this with me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, ever-living Word of God into my life. I'll never be the same again. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Part of our vision as we looked at a couple of weeks ago is bringing the Word of God to as many people as possible by as many means as possible. And that includes talking to people, writing letters, writing Easter cards, sending things to people. It includes the internet, it includes Facebook, it includes Twitter. Anywhere you can get that message out, get it out. Now I, want, I've, I have modified, I use the word modified about the picture of Israel, I've modified a couple of verses from the Bible here as well. But you'll understand what I'm saying when I show you this. We're going to celebrate creation today in a wonderful way. John chapter 1 verses 40 to 42. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And he tagged his own brother Simon and said to him, we've liked the Messiah. And he shared Jesus with him. That's what we need to know. We need to know that you can, you can, you can like somebody. You can share Jesus with somebody. And when you tag somebody, people know you're together. The next time they see that on a Facebook post, they know that you're with that person. Stephen has tagged Roy. So both of our sets of friends will know we're linked somehow. He tagged his brother. I want my brother to come and meet this person who I've liked. And now I'm going to share him. And then the following day, Jesus wanted to go to, da to Galilee. So he tagged Philip. And he said to him, like me. That's the gist of what is said in that scripture. And now Philip was from Bethlehem, the city of Andrew and Peter, and Philip tagged Nathaniel and said to him, we've liked him, who Moses said of the law, and also of the prophets, wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. We've liked him, so we want you to like him as well. We've tagged him because we're with him. We've tagged him. We're together. We're linked. Yeah? We have to be, show people that we're linked with one another. To show people, like Pastor Janet said, when we were uh, at the reception of that funeral of our neighbour the other day, the lady said, thank you for singing. Thank you for singing out like you meant it. What we were really saying was, we like Jesus and we want to share him with you by singing. We've been in chur a church before, an Anglican church once, uh, one of the Careful with your words here, Stephen. One of the most religious of the ones in this town. And we were, sat, we were stood there with our hands in the air, praising the Lord. And an elderly lady came to us later on and said, I can see you know Jesus then. Just because we had our hands in the air. She knew we were live ones. We knew we knew the Holy Ghost as well. Now, 
Well, we would like everybody who uses Facebook to go around sharing and liking Christian posts, especially those from the church. And that means you need to look at our Facebook page every now and again, just to make sure. Not everybody in this room understands this modern means of communicating. Not everybody understands it. Let me tell you why. Every one of us has got a brain. How many here have ever seen your brain? So we're doing this by faith. Yeah? We're believing by faith we've got a brain. Why do we believe that? Because we were told. We've got no, ev no physical evidence that we've got a brain, really. But we were told we've got a brain up in there. For all we know, it could be some gland in the middle of your chest somewhere that does all this stuff. But it's not. It's a brain in your head. Now, the thing about this brain in your head is, is that your brain, because of its fact that it's got a skull around it, that's just a representation, but there is a skull surrounding your, your brain, it's kind of hidden. We watched a, a few minutes of a TV program the other day, and I looked at this TV program and, and God said to me, I want you to preach that. And the program was about the brain. And you know, you have, your brain has never seen a beautiful face. Your brain has never seen a beautiful face. Not once. Your eyes may have done, but your brain hasn't. Your brain has never heard a really amusing sound. <laughs> Your brain has never heard that kind of sound. Your brain has never tasted anything sweet. Not, nothing. Your brain has never tasted anything sweet. Your brain... Uh, Got that wrong way around. Your brain has never touched anything really soft and squidgy. And your brain has never smelt an expensive perfume. I'm wearing that today. All my perfumes are expensive because they were bought by people who love me. I have, ne I have not born, bought, I have not bought an aftershave for myself in about 40 years. I haven't. And I've always bought the most expensive ones. Do you know why? Because they smell better and they last longer. So, there you go. See, your brain relies totally on what you've been, what you've fed it with. Relies totally on what you've been told. It is possible for you to have been taught when you were small that the perfume, the, the aftershave that I'm wearing, is a horrible smell. You could have been taught that. And every time you smelled it, you go, oh, that's disgusting. But you see, your brain has got used to things. It's got used to what you feed it with. And if you don't feed it with the right stuff, you're going to get some very rubbish ideas of what's really going on out there in the world. Your brain relies totally on what you or somebody else has told it in the past. The first time um, I met June, for instance, I was told, this is June, or June introduced herself. So my brain said, that's June. Now the way I do it, is I make a note in my phone of new people that come to the church. And then the next time June goes up, comes up, I go, that's that new lady again, what's her name? And I check him out, June. Do you know, it doesn't take me long. It doesn't take me long, and as soon as I see you, I know your name. And when I hear your name, I see a picture of your face. How does that work? Because our brains put the two things together. Our brain relies on the fact 
we're giving it correct information. I saw a picture on the TV the other day of, it was a picture of Einstein. You, know, you remember the pictures of Einstein you see in fairly large eyes and a, a beard and a moustache, well certainly a big moustache anyway, straggly hair everywhere. And they'd made a mould of his face, yeah? Only it was, it was inside out. When you held it here, the, it was bowl shaped. And yet when you looked at it, even with the camera, when you looked at it with your eyes or even the camera, it looked like it was outwards, like a normal shape. It looked like it was a positive instead of a negative. Why? Because your brain won't hand, can't handle that. It's never seen anybody with a negative bowl-shaped face, so it automatically translates it for you. Now we have to feed our minds and our brains with the right information. Otherwise we won't come up with the right information about what's going on in the world. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And whenever I'm teaching the Word of God to people, I always say, and I, I know people don't agree with this, but I don't care. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. That's the way I read that. Not just once. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. It comes by hearing and hearing. Say that. Hearing and hearing. You don't just get it the once. It, is, it is, has happened. I've had scripture read to me the first time I ever thought, oh, wow, I'm having that, that's mine. But usually, when I hear a scripture, I have to hear it again, and again, and again, until it really takes place, not just in my heart, not just in my spirit, in my brain. My brain has to know these scriptures as well, because that's where the battlefield is. When something's coming against me, when sickness and disease is coming against my body, and my brain is tempted to think you're sick, my body has been fed, my brain has been fed with enough information by the, the Bible to say, oh no, that's not true, by his stripes you were healed. And when the big bill comes through the door, and I'm tempted to think that's it, you haven't got any money to pay that bill, my brain has been fed with enough information in the past to, think to, to, to actually speak it out and say, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory. And like Pastor Janet said earlier on, Jesse's statement, and I love it, he said, I didn't ask you to pay for it, I asked you to believe for it. Amen. God has not asked us to pay for this building. He's asked to believe for it. That's all. Now that's in my brain now. So when somebody says to me, oh, you're going to have to pay for that, I go, no, it's not me. He said he would do it. We have to feed ourselves with the right information. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. If you want your life to be operating God's way, feed yourself with the Word of God. Feed yourself with the Word of God. So you can only truly believe the parts of the Bible that you feed your brain on, that you feed on. Your faith, your faith level is based on your hunger for the Word of God level. If you have no hunger for the Word of God and never read it from one month's end to the next, your level of faith will be really low. You won't be able to believe God for anything. Nothing. But I don't want to be like that. I want to believe God for anything God wants me to believe for. I want to reach out and grab anything that's impossible. We have been told so many times that the things we're reaching for are impossible. Brilliant. Bring it on God, that means you've got to do it now. Amen. See straight away my, my brain doesn't even, have, doesn't even have to think about it. I've fed my brain with so much word of God that when, God, when somebody says it's impossible, all I think is, well God's going to have to do it then. Straight away I think that. Um, I, yes, my Holy, the Holy Spirit in me gets involved too and brings scriptures to my remembrance, all that kind of stuff. My, my first reaction, my first and yours too, your first reaction is to see what your brain says about it. It's to see what you think about it. And I want us to have that kind of thought. I want us to have the kind of thought that's based on it. If you don't feed 
on the Bible, though I interchange the phrase Bible and Word of God, because to me they're the same. This is the Word of God. It's the Word of God to me anyway. If you don't feed on the Bible, when I preach, your mind shuts my words out. Some of you didn't get that, so I have to say it again. When I preach the Bible, if you don't read the Bible, I'm saying stuff your mind can't get a grip on, because you've never read the Bible. You don't bother reading the Bible, so when I'm preaching, it goes right over the top of your head. You need to stop that right now and start reading the Bible more. Even, even you who read the Bible, read more of it. Read it more. Get it into you more than you can do, you do now. I love it, and I'm not bragging on me, I'm bragging on God really, but I love it when I hear somebody start to preach a, a scripture and they start speak, preaching the, ah, tongue tied there, start speaking the scripture out and very often I can finish the scripture because I know what's coming next. Why? Because I've read the Bible a lot. When we moved to Germany a um, long time ago, 30 something years ago, when we moved to Germany, um, somebody gave us a new Bible, gave me a new Bible, brand new Bible. So we decided that every evening, just before we went to sleep, I would read that Bible for about five minutes. Maybe five to ten minutes, I would read the Bible out loud with Janet next to me in bed. We read the whole Bible in a year. Now I've got quite a good memory. I've got quite a good memory. There's no way you could then tell me a story from the Bible I'd never read. Because I'd read it all. And not only that, you could tell me a story from the Bible, and I'd go, I remember that. I might not know all about it, I might not remember all the names of the people involved, but I remember the story. Yeah? And do you remember when Abraham was in the lion's den? Who, who nodded then? It wasn't Abraham in the lion's den. Got some of you caught out there. It was Daniel. See, when, when somebody talks about Daniel, I think, lions. I remember something about lions. I might not have remembered the fire. I might not have remembered him looking out the window and, and praying and people being seeing him and all the rest of it. But I remembered that. You've got to read your Bible. Read it all the way through. If you read the Bible all the way through, from beginning to end, and it doesn't take long, if you read, it took me a year to read the whole thing out loud, ten minutes a night. Easy. Doesn't take very long. Then, there's nothing can happen in your life that you haven't read the answer to. Because the answer is in the Bible, to all the problems we might have. You see, it's not just the Bible it's not just feeding yourself on the right stuff. You've got to be around the right people. You've got to be around people who are positive. The Bible says in 1 John 4, Beloved, do not believe every spirit. That means the spirit behind things. But test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Don't believe every person. Don't believe every situation. Don't believe... Every doctrine you hear, check it out in the Bible. When you hear a new doctrine and you hear a new way of, of being a Christian or something, check it out in the Bible. In fact, do you be honest, you shouldn't have to check it out in your Bible because you should already know whether that's of God or not. But if you're not sure, check it in the Bible. And even if you are sure about that, check it with somebody else as well. Check it with somebody you know who knows God, who knows the Bible. Find somebody who knows the Bible more than you do. And say, look, I'm, I'm thinking of this about this situation. What do you think? And people have come to us before and we've said, this is the scripture you need to apply. And they've applied it and God bless their life. We need to do that more often. There's a lot of lying spirits around. Jesus talked about them. There's a lot of... of Lying ideas, lying doctrines, lying spirits around the world. And you've just got to make sure you've got the, the right handle on every one of them. How do you test a spirit? By the word of God. 
Two of the biggest lying spirits that I've come across. The first one is that God won't answer your prayer because you're not worthy. I've heard that so many times. That is because you still believe what's been told about you in the past. What other people said about you in the past. You still believe that. But if you read the Bible, you find out what God says about you now. He says you are worthy, you are accepted, you are beloved, you've been chosen, you are a blessed person because of what God thinks about you. And the other big uh, lying spirit that's around the body of Christ at the moment is, you don't have to tithe. I don't know if you've ever heard that one. It's easy to believe. Not tithing is easy to believe because it suits the carnal mind. What's the carnal mind? A mind that is, is refusing to believe God wants to believe itself. And you cannot live a spiritual life and not tithe. You can't do it. Because if you're living a spiritual life, you will be doing what the Bible says. And the Bible says you need to tithe. You tithe, I will open up the windows of heaven for you. You tithe and you will be honouring me, you will be blessing me, God says, and you will be showing me you trust me. God wants us to show him we trust him. If we can just trust him with 10% of what we get, he will bless us with 100% of what he's got. Anything we need, we can have. Is that being prosperity minded? Yes, of course it is. I'm never going to preach poverty. I'm never going to say, we are so weak and poor here, and God loves us because we're weak and poor. Why won't I say that? Because it doesn't say that in the Bible. It doesn't even say that in my head. Because my head says what the Bible says. And it says we're blessed. And God wants to pour out blessings on us. Blessings on you that you can't even contain. I like that. When you get so much you have to give some away, otherwise you look a bit ridiculous. When you've got so much blessing coming your way, you think, People are going to think there's something weird going here. Let's give some of this away. We've done it, and we're going to do it in the future again and again and again. But that's the, if you if you can believe those two things, you're in a bad way. That God won't answer your prayer because you're not worthy, and you don't have to tithe. Nobody I've ever met yet has been able to prove to me you don't have to tithe, because they'd have to prove it from some other book I don't believe in. Because the book I do believe in says that you need to do it. And it proves, to, it proves to God that you trust him. You trust him with your finances, he can trust you in any area. In John 14, 24, it says, He who does not love me, does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. The words Jesus spoke were not his own words. Jesus didn't want us to know what he thought about things. Do you realise that? Nowhere in the Bible is Jesus saying, this is what I think. He tells us what the Father said, because he wants to speak the word of God. He wants to speak the word of God at all times to us. We need to rely on God's Word, the Father's Word, just as much as Jesus did. See, when Jesus had a situation, he didn't speak his own words. He looked into himself, he looked into what he'd been taught, he looked into the Word of God inside him. He looked to Father and said, what would you say now? What would you say? We had a thing some time ago, I think some people still do it, what would Jesus do? So many in there, because God wants you to know, that's an actual fact you can rely on. Amen? See, the Father sent Jesus, who is the Word, in human form. Now, as a Christian, what is a Christian? The definition of a Christian is little Christ. A person who is acting like him. You should be the same. You should be relying on Father's Word. You should be relying on the Word of God, and you too will be full of grace and truth. But, 
how can people preach, it says in Romans 10, unless they're sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel? Do you want to be known by God as somebody who has beautiful feet? Then go tell people about Jesus. Tell people about the gospel. Start spreading the word of God. But to spread the word of God first you need to know it. Read it. And read it and read it and read it. And study it. And find out more about it. And then you can talk to people about it. Then when you see something on the internet that you think, my gosh, that's good. You can, you can share it with somebody. You can tell somebody about it. When you see a post that we have put up or somebody else has put up on Facebook, don't go, oh, that's nice, I like that. You can like it and not do anything about it. You see, do you know when you click on that little button mark, like? That's not saying you like it. You can look at it and think, oh, I like that. When you click on that button, you say, I like that so much, I want my friends to see it. That's what that's actually saying. And when you share it, you're not saying, I think this is really good, maybe somebody else should see it. What you're saying is, I think this is so good, I want all my friends to see this. They don't all see it. I know the Facebook way Facebook works, not everybody sees every post. But at least you can try. And then when you hear something that's good, something that's been preached that you like, and you think that is good, or even something that's challenging that you don't like, but you think, well, it's God anyway, so I better change my mind. Tell people about it. Tell somebody about it. I've heard people talking about things they've heard in other towns, other, other churches, and even in this church, where they've been telling somebody else. I heard a person say, well, I told so-and-so the other day, that two weeks ago you preached such and such and they should have been there and heard it so I shared it with them. I told them what you said because it fitted the situation. We need to get the word of God out so that more people come into the kingdom of God. Would you agree with that? We want more people coming through the doors to hear the word of God not just to build the church up, to build his church up, to build that the more people there are in this world that believe the word of God the less people there are who still believe the lies of the devil. Amen? So I want you to encourage yourself, please. Get into the Word of God and read it. Fill your mind with these good thoughts and good things from the Word of God so you too can be blessed to be a blessing and you can have beautiful feet. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Love it. Thank you.